Hey friends and welcome back to our series on studying effectively for GCSEs and A-levels. In this video, I will briefly mention the most important tool for helping you guide your revision and ensuring you've covered everything, which is a specification. So essentially, this specification is a document created by exam boards, which tells teachers what to teach you. Each exam board covers slightly different topics and in different ways, and your subject teachers decide which exam board they will be teaching from. For example, your physics teacher could be teaching from AQA, whereas your history teacher could be teaching from Edexcel. Most exam boards are the same, but there are small differences between topics, content, and the style of questions. Anyways, the specification looks something like this, and it's basically a long document which tells you everything about your subjects, including the formats of the exams you will be sitting. So over here, you can see uh, for OCR A-level chemistry, they have three exams, uh, two of which are two hours and 50 minutes, and another is one hour 30 minutes. And then there's a practice line endorsement as well. Then for most of the document, it just shows you uh, the content that your teachers will be teaching you through your GCSE or A-level. This is particularly useful as it helps you see where you're uh, learning fits into the rest of the course. So it goes on about the content for a few dozen pages. And then towards the end, it talks about uh, some of the learning objectives and a few other things to do with the course, uh, which isn't particularly important for most students. Of course, you don't have to read the entire document. The most important thing to look at is just a section on the content that you will be covering, as it provides a framework for organizing your notes and your flashcards and everything else to do with revision. Now, the specification for OCR A-level chemistry is fairly long, but for something like AQA English Literature, the specification is fairly short and doesn't provide much value to you as a student. It's more useful for teachers, and in the case of English Literature, it just lists the options uh, for texts that you can study, and your teachers will have picked one of these. So now, how do we go about finding the specification? Well, the easiest way is for each subject, ask your teacher what exam board you're doing. And you may already know this fact because they may have told you before during the lesson, but if you don't, then just send them an email asking what exam board it is. And after asking them, you can search on Google something like your exam board name, followed by your subject, and then just writing specification after that. So for example, my exam board is OCRA, A-level, chemistry, specification. So if I search that, then it takes me to this page, the first link. And in the case of the A-level specifications, you actually have two. You have the AS level specification and the A-level one. And the AS is basically all the content you will be covering in your first year. And the A-level is all the content you will be covering in your first and second year. So everything inside the AS specification is included in the A-level specification, apart from a few things like exam formats and whatnot. So you can just press the download A-level specification. And if you're not 100% sure this is your specification, then you can just email your subject teachers asking them for a PDF copy of the specification and they can just give it to you because they are allowed to share it with students. And after finding your specification, what I like to do is download it and save it, and then open up my downloads folder. Uh, and from the downloads folder, I upload it onto a Google Drive folder. Um, so if I do that now, uh, then just rename it to the specification or whatever. Rename it to specification, press enter. And when I double click on this, then you can see the specification is now loaded into uh, Google Drive. So the nice thing about this is that you can access it anywhere and on your phone if needs be. Others like to print out the specification, but since ink is expensive, I don't really bother. And besides, uh, the one time I did print out the specification, I ended up just letting it accumulate dust on my shelf because I always stuck to a digital specification. And a feature I also like about Google Drive is a comments feature. So if I highlight a section, then I can just leave a comment about it, so writing something like, I uh, uh, don't understand this. And then I can just come back to this point later on um, or ask my teacher about it. So basically reading through the specification is quite useful after covering something in class. And each time you uh, read a point from the specification, it should ring a bell of something you've covered in, covered in class. And if it doesn't, then it's best to go back to your notes or your flashcards to make sure it's actually covered. And if it still hasn't been covered, it may be worth asking your teacher about it. I usually tend to look at the specification every week or two to check how we're progressing through the course, because as your teacher teaches more of the course, uh, you should see that they're uh, slowly covering the content in the same order as it's listed in the specification. Now the specification can be quite tricky to understand at times, so what I find useful is copying a point from the specification, so say I don't understand what this point means, and if I just paste it and uh, search it, then there's usually a website which mentions the same point, 
So if I go to this first link, then it tells me what this point from the specification actually means. And then I can be like, oh yeah, I actually did a cover that in lesson. Uh, I would just wasn't sure on the wording they used in the specification to describe that piece of content. But if nothing comes up when you Google it, I would recommend asking your teacher about that specification point um, in some kind of email or something, and they'll usually explain to you what that actually means. For your specification, you can also find some documents which have links to the points in the specification to resources online. For example, this A-level uh, playlist by Jack Brown, he's made videos on everything from the specification uh, for A-level maths, um, and it's all linked here, so you can just uh, read about it here. And the reason you can do this is because for the new A-level uh, maths, all exam boards have to do pretty much exactly the same content. So, so if you're doing AQA maths, then you will cover like 95% of the same content as someone else doing at Excel uh, maths for A-level. So this document is pretty useful because if you think you haven't learned something properly from A-level maths, then you can always check with this video. And I'm sure there are many other documents like this out, out there that you can find after doing a bit of Googling. Anyways, that's pretty much it for now. We will be referring back to the specification in later videos, especially when we're making notes and flashcards and organizing them according to the specification. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.